it's still heavy, but it still requires a lot more soaking and in, in, uh, scraping. But I think it's this is going to be my masterpiece. Yeah. My name is Tom Huntington, uh, native name Daton. I've only been working with hides uh, just recently, basically. You know, my late parents passed away. And uh, as you know, we sometimes make potlatch, memorial potlatch, and I, I wanted to uh, do some special stuff for the potlatch we had for her, for them. So I thought one of the better things that I could do or that, that would uh, take big effort was uh, to, uh, to tan a moose hide in, in memory of my mom, because my mom taught me, uh, taught me about everything, everything that uh, I know and influenced me so much. And it was just a blessing that, you know, while I never tanned one before, maybe it was for the right reason or something, but that moose hide was, was just uh, absolutely beautiful. And uh, I was glad to uh, give that away in their honor. And then from that, I knew I wanted to do it more. Tanning that moose skin, uh, for me, really helped me in the grieving process uh, for my parents, especially my mom. I was a mama's boy. And uh, it was just like she was, every time you work on it, she's uh, with you, like, you know. So, so that, that really, really, made her being gone okay uh, after a while and and uh, and then I want to do more all hides I'm finding out are not the same so you don't treat them the same you put them through the same process but yeah. one hide you might not ring as hard as another hide you don't want no light knife marks on the inside that knife mark creates a um, imperfection. While the texture and the tanning is right, it's um, not what you want to end up with. Since you don't want knife marks on the inside, you want to leave as much flesh as you can on the hides. And there's different ways to remove that flesh. As old as this is, it's still putting in work. It's just a file old file in a piece of spruce in some string and um, it's been heated and, and, uh, and hammered, forged a little bit to make it chisel and they use this, they, uh, you know, while that moose is over that hide and, and they do this number. They just, and it's big, it's a little bit big because by design, they need a little bit weight for it to do the work. So they're not really pounding, otherwise you couldn't, you couldn't hold up. So they just go through the motions and let this weight do the work. And they just, they just slowly um, take the flesh off. And this one here is a uh, moose, moose leg bone and uh, and it's the same way. These are these are my fleshers. They they work really good. And then the, the second one is you gotta dehair it. And again, there's a number of ways. Uh, one, uh, you could use fermentation, which is uh, just put it in water. And uh, I find that uh, if you soak it for six days, the hair will start slipping off. Uh, not all of it, the big hairs will slip, but the, the stomach, the fine stomach hairs won't slip as good and you have to, you have to use your tools to, to help it along. I don't like waiting six days, so for myself, I'll flesh it and I'll put it on the, on the frame, stretch it really tight, and I just use a butcher knife. Um, I'll, I'll find a place, and, and you get pretty good with it too. And, and so you just, you just make, a, you just saw it and make it start it. And then after a while, this thing is so sharp. What it, I dull it here so it don't stab through the, the hide, but th this is pretty sharp. And I just poke it in a little bit and only about that far. 
and I just draw the knife down. I could do a hide in about an hour and a half. And that takes it right down to right down to the uh, hair follicle. And, and uh, that's the way I like to do it. The next step is to scrape the hide, either dry or frozen. To dry, you just put it on the frame and let it dry up. It just like becomes like plywood. And, and I made this one scraper, it's just a bent file, and it works really good, and I, I pivot pivoted against the hide right here and uh, this this the cutting part and I, and I just you know it's it's just motion it's not it's not muscular work it's just motion work and uh, you could you could go fast myself I like it to scrape it frozen for two reasons one that's what I remember the grandmas doing when I was a kid in Huslia. You know, why did they do it in the winter? It turns out that it's easier to scrape ice than to scrape wood. Your, your tools don't get dull, it's just scraping ice. It, it comes off fast and you, you finish fast. If you do all, almost all the uh, scraping on the hair side, I found that if you Take it down until there's no more hair follicles showing. You're almost at the right thickness, except for down the hump and back and across the main quarters. That doesn't require more scraping. And once you're at that stage, this is where you could include the smoke to help tan it. Because all, all what I said so far was hide preparation, fleshing, dehairing, scraping, uh, there's no tanning yet. Um, the next thing is you smoke it to uh, prepare that hide. And then after you figure that it's the right thickness, that's when you, the uh, soaking is going to start coming in. I like to use uh, soap to start cleaning the hide uh, because while, while the end product is uh, you're going to add oil to the hide, you have to remove that stuff that's in it naturally and put in different oils. There's a number of different soaps that you could use, but I like that uh, Fels Naphtha soap in water. And then you soak it and soak it until it feels like bread dough. And then once you get to that uh, stage, um, you could either start wringing it or you could start braining it right there. After I soak it, what I do is I wring it. I wring wring it out until what I call is that it's thirsty to be rehydrated again. That means the, the stuff you're going to add to it is going to be readily soaked in. It's just like if you if you get a dry rag and you throw it in the water, it'll, it won't just automatically soak up. But then if you get that rag and wet it and wring it out and put it back in, it'll just soak right back up just probably immediately. It's the same thing with moose skin. And then you add your, your moose brains, your uh, Fels naphtha soap, oil or animal fat, bear fat, and, uh, and lysophen granules to, so that the uh, oil and water can mix and it'll go in to the hide. And so once you, uh, you brain it, I, I, I put it in there and I just massage it, massage it, I work it, massage it, because I, I want it to go in. I just want to put it on there and just hope it go in. I, I, I really work it. And then I'll let it set for about an hour, and then I'll, I'll fold it in half to where the brain part is, you know, sandwiched, and I'll massage it again, and then I'll let it sit there for about a half hour, and then I'll, I'll refold it, and then it'll be about this big, you know, I'll fold it up and then I'll put it in a cool place and I'll leave it there for two and a half days. I want, I want that brains and stuff to really soak in there. And uh, once it's done there, you get some more soap, lysogen, a little bit of oil, and uh, make, I, I, I put about a 
six or seven gallons of mixture in there and I take that hide and I put it in that water and then I you know mix mix that what's in that hide in with the water and then I'll soak it for two more days and then the next step when you ring it I call one set a series of four rings I got a pole tied to a couple of birch trees out there I tie one edge all one place on a pole and, uh, and then another one on the ringing pole and I twist it up and it just end up in just one ball and then I'll lock it into place I'll let it uh, set there for about 45 minutes to an hour and then I'll on, on the wrap it the opposite direction hold it there for 45 minutes to an hour and then I'll take that off rotate the moose hide um, 90 degrees tie it off this way and do the same thing in the other direction that's one set of four after those four rings it'll go back into the water for about an hour and then I'll do it another set and then I'll do that for two days and at the end of the first day I'll put it back in the water soak some more and then second day repeat at any time you could add smoke if you wanted to do that all you do is put it back on the frame and let it dry it's just to add that little bit of magic to it this next phase is what you, what I call the uh, the working at phase and then so you do the same thing you have it over the pole you work one side you go to the other side you work you work that hide you slide that hide 90 degrees so it's hanging over the pole you work it that way and then uh, it's just like like a sheet hanging over a pole you pull one end then pull it over then you flip it and you do the same thing so one set is scraping it in two directions on both sides and you want to do that for two days two sets each day with going back into the water uh, each time so you have 16 total times you're ringing it 16 total times that you're you're working it and then uh, after I do all that uh, you soak it at the end of the day now to actually what I what I call the tanning part uh, how I do it is I I put it over the pole I scrape as much water out as I can and then I put it on the stretching frame put it on I mean, and, and then just work it and I just I just squeeze in the water out I made this one it's a metal and on a, on a pole I, I do the same thing I'm just I'm just pushing pushing it everywhere you just keep keep it moving after a while it's starting to act dry and it's starting to starting to look like tan muskin if it has if it's fuzzy you know you have to you scrape it so many times that the fibers on the surface is separated and that that texture that um, the tan muskin is it's starting to show the thing about that last day which I would say is it's about 12 hours so it'd be good to have help because you have to work it until it's thoroughly dry if there's any moisture in there when you're done and if you let it set it'll turn hard at that point you should have a tan moose skin the final step is the um, waterproofing and coloring of it and uh, the smoking of it um, if I see a certain rotten wood if I got a little container I'll get a little bit that puts the waterproofing and coloring into into the uh, a beautiful uh, tan frame tan moose skin and I found out if you pulverize it like buhack you could just have a big mound in there and it'll just make a really good smudge and, and it won't catch fire this is a finished product from that and uh, it's it's beautiful one of my grandsons are going to be happy wearing something with this one there's many steps uh, and and while it's 
it's an effort. I refuse to say that it's hard work. It's uh, healthy, healthy for you. It's good exercise. It makes you feel good. That's for sure. I know. I know without a doubt that uh, the feeling I get from uh, from putting in the effort and then and, and realizing uh, the end product, it 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 really makes a person feel good. I just hope and pray that it's a ac cultural activity that's revitalized and we start using it again because that's just a small aspect of what the land provides for us. There's too many, too many muskins uh, going away without being used to the full, full effect, yeah.